the pioneering technology of the Ocean Cleanup, a Dutch project developing systems to clean up the floating plastic from the oceans, could remove 90% of this plastic by 2040, says the company. And the latest generation of their technology, System 03, will allow them to clean the entire Great Pacific Garbage Patch, a collection of marine debris in the North Pacific that is three times the size of France and contains up to 100 million kilos of plastic waste. They have already removed more than 100,000 kilos. The Ocean Cleanup has also developed a clever solution to the source problem of marine plastic. 1,000 rivers are responsible for roughly 80 percent of the world's plastic pollution. They have developed the world's first scalable river plastics collector, a transportable solar powered and fully autonomous vessel that can collect around 50,000 kilograms of plastic a day from the world's most contaminating rivers before the debris has a chance to reach the ocean. Just before hibernation season, brown bears eat a lot as much as 20,000 daily calories, in fact. Enough to put on around four kilos. And then they barely move for months. If we humans did the same, we would gain a dangerous amount of weight, and then we would probably get diabetes. But brown bears are clever enough to avoid that, and scientists have discovered how. One of the interesting things about bears during hibernation is that they become insulin resistant. And during the active season, they're insulin sensitive. So that means that every year they have reversible insulin resistance. And so we thought, wow, if we could figure out how bears are able to do this naturally every year with no negative consequences, then maybe that will give us some information how to potentially develop new therapeutics for humans. They have identified eight key proteins, also found in people, that help bears control their insulin levels. Insulin is a hormone that regulates the concentration of glucose, sugar, in the blood. And it does that, for example, by sending signals to the muscles, the liver, and fat cells to absorb the sugar. The thing is, if too much sugar enters the body, our cells stop responding to our friend the insulin and they become insulin resistant. But scientists have discovered that even when brown bears gorge themselves, insulin resistance only kicks in afterwards, during hibernation, and not during the preparation, which allows them to remain diabetes free. We are very interested in how does this relate to humans and how does this relate to me. And the, the truth is that all of it relates to us, right? No matter what kind of organism we're looking at or what ecosystem or anything, we're all connected. In another huge win for medicine, an experimental drug has significantly slowed the progression of Alzheimer's in a major trial. And the US regulators are already evaluating it under a special accelerated approval pathway. It is the first ever medicine to show a sharp improvement in the treatment of the degenerative disease, which is the most common type of dementia. The drug, called lecanemab, reduced the pace of cognitive decline in people with early disease by 27% over 18 months when compared with a placebo, meeting the main goal of the trial. It is a major milestone for researchers who have been trying for decades to battle the severe mental decline of Alzheimer's patients. Now we travel to Quito, Ecuador, where a social gastronomic project called Idonia, led by Santiago Rosero, a gastronomy-loving journalist and cook, and Estefania Gomez, a development specialist, also works to fight against food waste and to channel unwanted food to vulnerable populations. Idonia's team rescues discarded vegetables and fruit from markets and farms in Quito and other cities in Ecuador, and then prepares plant-based menus. These are then offered to the general public at reasonable prices and free of charge to people in need. The locations change regularly. Sometimes they set up in friends' restaurants or unconventional places such as churches or schools, where they organize events that combine gastronomy and training. One of the principles that is elemental, digamos, is not nada muy robustado, is that if we rescate food and there are people who need food, we will share food. Básico, ¿no? El 30% o la tercera parte de toda la comida que se produce en el mundo se desperdicia cada día. 
se producen tres manzanas, una termina desperdiciada. Ese 30% equivale a 1.300 millones de toneladas de alimentos. The collection of the ingredients, the cooking, serving and cleaning tasks are possible thanks to a team of volunteers, while the gastronomic vision is left to the chefs of the host restaurant who contribute with their styles and concepts. Just a small group of people with strong values makes a tremendous impact in their community. Alice, an all-electric aircraft, just carried out her maiden flight in the United States. It's a wonderful experience for everyone who is here. Um, we were able to witness history uh, in the making. Uh, the flight lasted for eight minutes. Uh, we flew 3,500 feet in altitude and uh, we were able to complete our test plan exactly as we intended to. The Arlington-based company is aiming to deliver passenger and cargo electric planes by 2027. Aviation is on a growing list of companies that have joined the challenge to change the way we fly making aviation more efficient, sustainable, and less expensive, thanks to greener propulsion technologies. If you found value in this episode of the Good News Roundup, let us know in the comments and share our stories with your friends. And remember, it can be hard to find among the headlines, but some news can be good news.